Standing close to the shore of Loch Finn in County Donegal, it forms the headwaters of the River Finn catchment, which flows for approximately 40 miles downstream where it meets the Tidal River Foil in Lifford. There is a great diversity of aquatic habitats within the Finn catchment. Land use can have significant positive and negative impacts upon our native fish populations and the natural processes they depend on. Continuing our tour of the Upper Finn catchment, I'm standing in front of Loch Muck. Loch Muck is uh, one of many small lochs or lochins within the Upper Finn catchment. Uh, they're very low in nutrients and are dominated by a large number of small brown trout. You can see the surrounding landscape is predominantly sheep grazing with some conifer forestry plantations. Loch Muck is typical of the many small upland low nutrient water bodies present within the Upper Finn catchment. The Stranagopa is the outflowing channel from Loch Muck and is one example of hundreds of minor tributaries or burns within the Finn catchment. The tributaries are the lifeblood of the catchment. They provide sustainable spawning, nursery and feeding habitats for some of our best known native fish species, including salmon and trout. It's critical that these channels are unpolluted and have diverse in-stream and riverside habitats to ensure the survival of these iconic species. The local survival of our native fish species throughout all their life stages requires a good appreciation of how humans can impact upon our rivers and lakes. Understanding, protecting and facilitating natural river processes is an essential part of catchment management. I'm now in the River Reelan catchment, uh, the major tributary of the River Finn. Uh, we're here in the upper part of the Reelan catchment to look at other land uses that could have an impact within the aquatic or the river catchments of the, of the Finn system. Uh, behind me is a large conifer plantation. You can see three stages in the conifer plantation process. You've got mature uh, standing crop that's close to felling time. You've got completely felled areas or clear felled areas and then you've got re-established forestry areas which have been planted within the last few years. The many and varied processes involved in land use and particularly forest can have an impact on catchments and we're interested to find out what these impacts can be and how to reduce them. We're here today on the Alata River it's an important tributary of the Finn catchment. We all know that rivers are dynamic, so erosion is a natural process. It's essential for the river. If the river likes to, to flow through here, it meanders. What it'll do is it'll cut away some banks. It'll deposit these gravels on the sides of the banks. These are important for spawning salmon. But unfortunately, uh, if it gets out of control, we'll also have a lot of sediment deposited in the river. In higher water conditions, the river will sort out the gravels. Uh, this would be excellent spawning habitat for Atlantic salmon and sea trout. Even within this small stretch of river, we've got a diversity of habitats. Behind me here, we have a pool which has been scoured out. It's great holding for adult fish. Just in front of me here, we have a riffle. It's perfect nursery for juvenile fish. And on further behind, we have some nice gravels where the fish can spawn on. We know erosion is a natural process. However, it can go uncontrolled. When banks erode and subside, you can see that they can release excessive amounts of fine sediment into the water course. Unfortunately, this may clog up some of the important spawning gravels. As you can see here, 
This bank has stabilized with the help of the tree roots. But if you look to my left hand side, you'll see that the bank's all cut away. It's badly eroded and it's starting to subside back into the river. In the past, and currently in wilderness areas, naturally would have been more trees in the landscape. As the banks erode and the trees fall into the river, they're pushed up against the banks and provide some natural protection, and they control erosional processes. The Locks Agency has been assessing the quantity and extent of river habitats within the fin catchment. This involves walkover surveys to collect a wide variety of information. Potential impacts upon these habitats are also recorded and this information will be used to develop tailored programs of measures to protect, conserve and improve aquatic habitats within the fin catchment. The LOX Agency has implemented habitat improvement measures within the fin, including native tree planting projects adjacent to tributary rivers. Tree planting can have a number of positive impacts alongside rivers, including controlling erosion, providing shade to keep rivers cool and to intercept rainfall. Soil erosion and associated sedimentation has been identified as a potentially significant impact within the headwaters of the River Finn. Deforestation, turf cutting, overgrazing, severe bank erosion and drainage can all contribute towards uncontrolled sediment release. Sedimentation can impact upon fish prey abundance and can clog vital spawning gravels. The Finn is a living landscape with vibrant communities throughout. Farming is an important economic driver locally, with the agricultural sector having responsibility for the majority of land management. New opportunities continue to develop to facilitate modern farm best practice, while together protecting, conserving, and improving our aquatic habitats. Developing positive and constructive partnerships is critical in delivering this. There are significant developing opportunities to contribute towards future sustainable rural economies. On our tour of the Finn catchment, we've covered many different landscapes and habitats. The Finn is an important river, not just locally and nationally, but internationally. At a European level, uh, the River Finn is a designated special area of conservation for its populations of Atlantic salmon, otter, and a number of other selection features. What can we do to improve the catchments of the fin? We can see it's a beautiful area. It's got many and varied habitats and landscapes. But what can you do and what can organizations like the Locks Agency do to improve the lot of the fin catchment? The Locks Agency are keen to contribute towards the development of active partnerships within the fin catchment. We want to develop conservation and protection oriented projects for the benefit of local communities and for the local environment. Mm -hmm.